Hello, Babisha. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. What is happening in KDE? It looks like a very simple question, but try to ask five different people. And I'm wondering uh, what kind of answers you are going to get. Doing a small experiment, you are going to find very, very different answers. Much depending on which kind of social media of, or news sites those people are using. An idea for this talk came to me um, as I started to read a little less of KDE developers blog and a little more of general news because of lack of time to read all that's happening for the developers in KDE. And then I realized that depending on the news source, I get a completely different view of KD. So, as of someone with a research background, let's do some research. When we start research, we define the observation time period. From academy to academy, from September 2019, to August 2020. So, what were the important KDE events during that time? Please use the chat and write down what you think was important, what you find important, what you've read on the different news sites. From the academy, the academy, the academy of 2019 included. Of course, there were a lot of things happening. And if we just go to the official KDE news sites, we'll find the release posts, we'll find developers' blogs, enormous amount of information. So, in the end, it is I did. I assume that you are reading or listening a single news source, reading a website, listening to a podcast. My discovery of the last year are Linux-related podcasts, so I had to cover a little bit of that. And the news sites I have analyzed, it's my personal choice, the things I read, all the things I found interesting to tell you about, there were more I investigated, but I think that we can cover just a little bit. And then you will see what, what shows up from it. I decided not to use a social media. So only new sites, podcasts, uh, and no social media for very practical reasons. Social media is pretty hard to grab and analyze, and there's a lot of posts. So it's complicated to work with this data. And the other, the other point was that you are probably aware, depending of, on who you are, social media gives you different content depending on all the things you are reading, uh, all the things you like. For me and from every one of you, Facebook, uh, all the social media gives completely different things. So I found that it's not very reliable to look into. Yes, Instagram also, as Jonathan suggests, it also gives different things. That can be an idea for some further research in the future. But, but for the next one. So I can see that there is already, um, there are some ideas in the chat. We have KD working more in, on Wayland, monthly app updates, usability, productivity, several Plasma releases, Plasma 518 LTS, 
And the Kitty Instagram is probably very influential. I guess so. Haven't checked out. I guess so. Be with the nice screenshots. How I organized the results I present to you. I start from the sites where I found less reference to KDE. And then I'm going forward with more and more references. So let's get started. If the only thing you were reading was Tech Republic, you will learn very little about Kitty. In November last year, there was an interview with Fedora project leader who was mentioning the KDE spin as one of the project that there is. Uh, then in the middle of year, we have had an article about which Linux user interface is best for which kind of um, what type of audience. And they decided they, that the Plasma is the best for admins. And there was one article about distribution specific lap laptops and it featured a uh, slim book um, for example. And then quite recently, there was one article with the title, I'm still not switching for GNOME. Um, talking about new features of the KD still, but with a conclusion, as you can, as you can probably imagine. So not very much, nothing probably from the list they have written in the chat. Let's go forward to another site. Linux Weekly News. That's a little bit more complex. It's a more Linux, a lot of kernel, in-depth articles. And what do we find here? Not much in 2019, but in 2020, it starts to appear more. We have a point about the Plasma Big Screen. Uh, we have a point about the Qt licensing, uh, linking to the famous post on the KDE community mailing list about the issues between the Qt Foundation and KDE. I guess that probably everyone is a little bit aware of that story. And we also do have pretty big covering of Kden Life and two versions. So we have 20.04 and we have 20.08 uh, later in the year. We have the release of Plasma 5.19, but not 5.18. And we have the Digicam um, release also. So you can probably see that we have the big the big releases. We have some preferred applications here. For some, <laughs> for some, a little bit surprising, finally. And the very big, important, open source facing issue of licensing of, of Qt. Now, we are moving forward and we'll change the place and the way of accessing the media. Linux Unplugged. It's a, one of very popular Linux, plug, Linux uh, podcasts um, getting out every week. From my point of view, very much distribution oriented and very much user oriented. They invite developers, but they, they are very much oriented to the end user. How the sysadmins and advanced Linux user uh, can configure and work with their systems. And we have even more KDE stuff. Um, I would probably start with the plasma, 
going a little bit mixed uh, in the time because the chronological uh, the coming in time here may be a little bit complicated. We have the plasma releases 517, 518. Uh, we have the um, Manjaro with plasma that gets reviewed. We have uh, the review in general of plasma, different points of view on plasma in the distro review episode. And um, we do have a little bit of hardware. We have the Kubuntu Focus. We have the Manjaro KDE on Pinbook. And what's interesting, we do have the, the, them covering the Neon based on the latest Ubuntu 20.04. From the things that are less known on the other sides. Um, I would like to note, uh, to point out that they have mentioned the fact that KD was looking for a project manager. That's what, one of the episodes when the search was in progress, they were talking about it. And now, something that I couldn't put on the timeline because there was a little bit too much of it. For, uh, on uh, Foronix, you basically have an article every three to four days. When I look at just the KD summaries page, there were four pages for the uh, for the year. What we do have being covered every time it shows up is the Nate's blog post uh, the week in KD, which is summarized on the site every single week. And we do have the Plasma Mobile Weekly. When it was published, it was also summarized on the site. Now, they are covering also a lot of KDE releases. Quite obviously, they are all of the Plasma releases, the framework releases, and the KDE applications. As as a blog, but they also cover the big, the big applications like Digicam, KDevelop, KDenLive, Krita. But surprisingly, also some of those that are a bit, a bit, I think less popular, like the Trinity Desktop, KML Online that went, and. They also cover the Kwin FT uh, fork. For those who missed it, uh, because they were reading other sites, uh, that is the fork to work um, to make Kwin better on Wayland. And that got covered multiple times. Uh, you probably noticed it also on the LWN net uh, that was also mentioned, but only once. First part and the second part. They are also covering the developers' blog posts. I listed a few names that got covered, and there were some various posts about the conference presentations, about hardware. Uh, I found a point about Kubuntu Focus a few of them, but I didn't find anything about Slimbook. They covered the GitLab migration, they covered the big screen initiative, and they had an article about the KDE events in December, summarizing the whole year 2019. And now, a few takeaways. From the whole, from the whole thing. I was looking what the new sites do pick up, and I found out that there is a different KDE year on each of those, and there's no COVID. 
if you look at KD, there's absolutely no COVID in there. The releases, they matter. Maybe not all of them, but they get covered. Good release documentation, materials related to the release, they do happen. They do make difference and they will get get taken uh, by the new site. Plasma definitely is a thing, but also the big applications, the big popular application. In th this year, what got covered on the hardware side were laptops. No phones whatso whatsoever. Didn't find anything about KDE on phones this year. And that's probably understandable for most of you. The big changes happening in the project, be them good or bad, like licensing changes or licensing issues, like the conflicts happening in the project, like forks. If they happen, they have a big chance to be taken by the new sites. My suggestions for people working on projects, if you want to get covered, what you can do. Weekly news from projects, communities, and applications. That's something that gets read and maybe not every single time, but from time to time, the information goes out and is covered. Detailed blog posts, for example, about the design decisions be, uh, behind the big changes and the modifications that are very much visible to the user. That's something that if you write a blog post about it, it can become uh, become popular and transmitted by the by the insights. I also think I can even bet to that. If someone starts writing what is new in Plasma or in KD in a given distribution in the new version that is likely to get covered. Definitely the changes in KD happen at some point, but the moment when it shows up in the distribution, it's a different moment of time. Many people will be interested in knowing that some of those changes did come to their distribution right now. Hardware running KD, last point, that is definitely interesting to people. And if you write about hardware running on KDE, being laptops, be it phones, be it watches or whatever you can find, I would say it's going to be covered. Before we wrap up and we go to the questions, a little bit a footnote about the data analysis. As a developer, I wanted to automate things. So I will grab the RSS. RSS but the number of keywords related to KDE is big because we have to cover KDE, we have to cover Plasma, we have to cover all of the biggest applications. And the feeds do not cover the whole year, but that's probably I can work around. On the other hand, there's the abstract of the news and there is the news itself. For some sites, the KDE is not even in the abstract. It is in the content of the article. So you have to look for desktop review, for distribution review, and then look into the article itself to find out if the KDE is covered in there. So finally, most of the analysis was done manually. Not all of it. If you know about the tools, I'm interested. And I'm also wondering that with all of those keywords, maybe I can 
to some artificial intelligence next time for the next analysis. That may be interesting, an interesting experience. And now we'll go to the questions. It was a great talk, Marta. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we have a question. The monthly app updates don't tend to get many pointers. Isn't that a problem in the format? Ah, a good question. Um, I'm not sure why it gets no, uh, no updates, um, no, uh, no news. Um, I can I can look into that. Maybe there is some uh, some issue with the referencing. I would say that it's definitely something that has a potential to be heavily linked, and I can I can look into that and uh, try to suggest what what you can do to to make it more popular. Okay, great. One more question. Can you come to Promo and help us out there? We collect a lot of data, but could us could use your advice? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's something I will I will do soon. Um, coming back a little bit more in the development and in the in the data analysis, definitely I can help the Promo team with with that. Okay. Uh, we have another question. There is a link uh, which you will be able to see in the shared notes. Uh, if you're interested in hard data regarding coverage of KD news, blogs, and so on, I think it's not a question. Yeah, but very interesting. I take I take a note of the link. I wasn't aware, so I'm taking it definitely something not to look into for me. Yeah, and one person is asking. Any good podcast you looked at? Depending what you are searching for. Um, there are a lot of Linux podcasts out there. And depending on what kind of content you are looking for, if it's more of an admin user, Linux Unplugged for that is very good. Uh, there are podcasts about new people coming to Linux, um, about more beginner stuff. Um, I can probably come with some names, but but I, they do not come just right now. Uh, you search in your favorite uh, search engine for Linux uh, Linux podcasts. There's also, for example, the Ubuntu podcast that is pretty good. Um, on my suggestion is go look for for those podcasts. There are a lot of them. Listen to an episode or two, and you and you will make your mind finding out if it's interesting for you or not. That's uh, that's the way I'm doing it. 